Hello and good morning. My name is Jack Palmer and I am a senior consultant within Frost and Sullivan's automotive and transportation team. I'm delighted to be speaking to you today at the Connected Fleets Conference 2021. During the course of the presentation, I'm going to take you through some key trends in the automotive mobility ecosystem. And then I'm going to shift the focus to one of my key areas of expertise, which is data monetization and utilization. So with that said, uh, we're going to move forward and get the presentation underway. The first few slides are going to give some context to where we are within the, the automotive uh, fleet industry today. Um, as you uh, will be well aware, the ecosystem is going through uh, a series of changes, many which have been accelerated by the COVID-19 pandemic. For well over a year now, we have witnessed macroeconomic trends such as working from home, um, increased e-commerce activity due to lockdown measures, and companies adopting cash saving measures. And this has had an effect on the, the micro um, uh, impacts within the industry. Uh, and that means that we are noticing an increase in the demand for delivery vans due to the increase in the last mile delivery business. Uh, we've seen a reduction in fleet renewals due to cash and liqu liquidity challenges, uh, as well as due to low production numbers of new vehicles. And we've also seen um, changes to mobility patterns, which have had effects on how consumers get around and how, the, how they take out insurance policies. So due to a combination of these macro and micro factors, there's been a change in demand uh, or a, a, a difference in demand for uh, cheaper personal mobility modes, private and short-term leases, uh, less expen expensive models and flexible contracts. So starting from that macro view that I, uh, I explained uh, at the, uh, the start of the, uh, the first slide, uh, we're now going to drill down into some of the, the vehicle financing changes um, that have been, that have been um, changing. Um, we can see that leasing uh, is now the uh, go-to choice for financing a vehicle for both private and corporates alike. So um, some of the models that we see on, uh, on the screen here have, have and will show um, high growth potential in the next uh, couple of years. So products such as uh, company car leasing, XEV leasing, uh, the idea that it's going to increase the adoption of EVs, private leasing, uh, and segment dedicated products uh, like micro, small and uh, medium enterprise leasing are all going to experience a, a lot of growth, in our opinion, in the next few years. So on top of these specialised products, we've noticed an increase in demand for value added services, such as fleet telematics, which can help companies with cost reduction, optimization, and driver safety. Um, Moving forward to our, our final slide uh, on this uh, kind of context setting um, that I'm trying to sh show here. Um, for 2021, we expect to see a recovery uh, in fleet numbers, uh, especially with regards to leasing solutions. And, and that really uh, speaks to points one, two and three. Corporate leasing, private leasing and electric vehicle leasing is uh, expected to, to grow uh, in uh, to, towards the end of the year and into 2022. Uh, it will probably come as no surprise that EV leasing is expected to, to witness these high growth rates. Uh, this will be driven by regulations across um, European countries and also due to the aggressive strategies that leasing companies will be uh, pushing towards their clients. And um, in keeping with what we've seen over the, the last few years, there'll be um, more demand for flexible solutions, uh, such as vehicle subscriptions or short-term leasing. Uh, and uh, we expect that to grow uh, towards the back end of 2021 with, uh, with new providers coming into the market and offering these solutions uh, pretty aggressively. Um, so I've already touched on, on fleet connectivity a little bit already. This is, this is driven overall by the trend towards di digitalization, but it also holds some, some interesting opportunities um, for monetization of data. And that's what I'm going to um, spend the rest of the presentation uh, talking about now. So, um, yeah, essentially, uh, the, the vehicle is a smartphone on wheels. Um, it's um, um, 
become very highly connected through embedded um, telematics um, units. Um, and the, the diagram here is just a snapshot of the data points that uh, are starting to be provided, not just on high-end models, but all sorts of, um, kind of trickle-down effects that that's had. So if you now imagine combining just some of these data points, and uh, many of them are combined uh, with GPS locations and then other elements of the car, it's, it's going to hold some tr tremendous uh, use case potential for fleet management. And you can just imagine uh, already, and has been has been there for quite some time, use cases such as route optimization, driver monitoring, the ability to manage the total cost of ownership, uh, helping with the, the future pro procurement decisions of fleets. Those are just four use cases that are extremely um, kind of wide in scope and, and maybe not even that, uh, that well linked to each other, but it just shows the absolute breadth of potential uh, by, by combining different data sets um, for, for the benefit of fleets. So um, what we'll see overall in the next decade uh, is that uh, maybe when we look back at 2021, we'll, we'll realise that we were just at the tip of the iceberg. And uh, as we, we move forward to uh, a more um, fully automated vehicle and eventually the, the fully autonomous car, will realize that the data that was available in 2021 pales in, into uh, uh, in significance um, to what we'll see in 2030 with the overall data that's available. Uh, and this, uh, this means that per vehicle, uh, the amount of uh, data coming off per day will just increase exponentially. And this will be driven by the, the sensors on the vehicle for, for all sorts of different purposes. Um, but what I'd like to explain on the on the next slide is that uh, if you don't think intelligently as an organization about the data uh, that uh, th that you're using and you're and you're just collecting it for kind of no no purpose or you're not you're not putting it to a, 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 a specific use then it it really is a kind of it will become a, a pointless cost center it needs to be kind of integrated within your thinking as an organization so from our perspective connectivity and ultimately data should be viewed in, in three key ways. Uh, the first being the fact that uh, it's, an, it's an enabler of upgrading um, the vehicle. Uh, so thinking about over the air updates and the, and the benefits that that can hold, uh, and that would just become ubiquitous ac across um, the, the, the fleet sector in years to come. Um, also thinking um, maybe more from, a, from a, an OEM perspective, but um, monetizing uh, this data uh, and generating new revenue streams is becoming a, a key strategy. Um, and uh, this is where also the new trend of feature on demand comes in the ability to give the, the, the consumer or the, maybe the fleet manager the potential to upgrade um, or update um, features in the car post purchase, very interesting delivery mechanism, mechanism in, in that regard. And then perhaps most importantly, um, and, you, and I like to think that you shouldn't really think about the first two uh, of upgrading and monetizing until you think about how it can retain customers and how it can engender loyalty and make, making them come back to, to you as, a, um, as a, uh, an OEM or as a fleet again and again, that's the, the, the most important part of this in, in, in terms of thinking about connectivity, what it can do to create that emotional contact um, and, and make sure that they're, that they're loyal to your brand. I'm now going to uh, talk about some of the strategies that we see in the market for, for data monetization, monetization and how um, OEMs are pursuing this, and this is a fast-paced and, and uh, quickly changing area of the industry. Um, and uh, we see many different companies following um, different strategies or following multiple strategies that you see on the screen here. So um, the idea of uh, an OEM doing it completely themselves or, or pretty much completely themselves was seen with BMW when they launched BMW Car Data in, in 2018. So they provide a platform for third parties, uh, be they um, 
FMS providers, fleet management service providers, or insurance companies to access BMW and, and mini car data. And, and the benefit for the BMW group here as a whole is that they retain uh, as much control as, as possible over the price over uh, of the data, uh, of the data consumers getting access to the data too, and of the uses of the data. And this, uh, as you'd imagine, uh, holds the highest potential for revenue for, uh, from data. However, the, the downside would be that it's, it's something that BMW Group have to own completely, have to, have to invest in heavily to do, uh, do, uh, do what they need to do in this area, and obviously bring in the, the competency, competencies and the, and the job titles to, to, to do this. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's one strategy that we see. Uh, an interesting other strategy is the um, ability to kind of partner with different uh, companies on an ad hoc basis. So um, what we see here with Avis Budget Group and, and Ford, as an example, um, um, Ford gave access uh, to um, the US and the European fleet to, to Avis Budget Group uh, for um, different uh, fleet management data uh, integrations. This, this is a strategy overall that uh, allows uh, companies to partner on a, an ad hoc basis. They retain uh, tight control over, uh, over who and, and how the, the data is being used, um, but then it requires kind of a, a, a BD effort, uh, again, um, on an ad hoc basis, which, which could be quite cumbersome to, to, uh, to roll out en masse. So that's why um, we've seen the rise of um, data marketplaces and, and API um, companies, a, API service providers um, to make this more, um, make it more easier uh, to, to roll out. So uh, in terms of data marketplaces, um, some of the names um, at the bottom of the screen here might be interesting. Uh, to you, in fact, that uh, they're very much in the news at the moment. Autonomo here, Caruso and Weijo, they uh, they have been uh, been around the market for some time in terms of um, giving the uh, the OEMs the ability to, to to launch quickly and to and to hand off the um, uh, the regulatory consent management, uh, the advertising and, and BD efforts to to. Uh, to the company away from the OEM. Um, and uh, it's a, a similar type of uh, kind of way to help out um, OEMs that we see with API partnership um, providers such as Smart Car in the US, but also Motalk in the US and High Mobility in Germany. Um, so these are some, some kind of wide ranging strategies that we see OEMs experimenting with. And uh, there's, uh, there's important, it's important to say that there's, there's no single one way of doing this, and it, it will suit the needs of different OEMs to do it in different ways. So I think um, I've spoken quite a bit about the um, blue sky um, approaches um, so far in terms of um, thinking about use cases, um, thinking about um, what types of, uh, of, of uses the data can go to. Um, but we also need to realize that um, this, all, this whole equation falls apart if you don't think about uh, regulations. Um, and in Europe, we're operating in an environment which has some of the most comprehensive rights in respect, in respect to data privacy in the world. So um, this is a, a very different kind of, um, regulatory environment compared to in the US. Citizens in the EU have had data protection rights enshrined um, um, for, for some time, and this is what GDPR is built upon, and it's, it's not an environment that's, that's standing still by any means. Actually, at the bottom of the screen here in the blue boxes, you can see some of the, the recently uh, enacted uh, regulations that have come into play, and then um, the emerging issues and legislations on the right hand side in terms of what we expect to be coming down the line in the in the uh, next uh, decade or at least in the next five years in terms of an updated e-privacy regulation 
um, an evolving situation between um, the, the privacy shield of the EU and the, and the US. And then very interestingly, um, the European Union's commitment to pushing this even further forward in terms of how they're thinking about data with um, regu regulatory obligations to artificial intelligence. Um, and that's going to be, um, it's claimed to be the world's first legal framework for, for AI. Um, so it's, it's, uh, the message here is, is you can think about these use cases and how it can help the, the fleet sector. But if you're uh, really pushing uh, the, the banner of uh, how, to, how, how you're using data, front and centre needs to be um, regulation and consent management and, and being consumer centric. And that's really the, the message that I'm going to um, leave you with in terms of, of how to win in the data monetization space. And you can see the four pillars um, that uh, I've outlined here um, that really fall down if you don't think about the foundations of, of how you're doing this. And it, it boils down to end user centricity, um, being good uh, with data, using it for the right purposes, um, and uh, thinking about privacy, security, ethics, rather than just thinking about the services. Uh, sorry, rather than just thinking about revenue, instead of thinking about the services that you're that you're giving. So um, these uh, four pillars, and not necessarily um, in, in order of importance here, but you, you've got to be thinking about how the organisation wants to use data. Uh, at, at a, a very high level. Is it going to run through your organization or is it something that's going to be kind of a, a side business? What are the types of data monetization programs you want to be running? Um, and uh, what are the use cases you want to be enabling? And who do you, who do you want to work with? And this is um, pretty central or extremely central to, to how OEMs are thinking about this and then how they can supply great services to the to the uh, fleet management side of, of the industry. Um, so with that, uh, that's been a snapshot into um, where we see uh, the, the industry at the moment with then a bit of a focus on uh, data monetization and what's going on in that space. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions uh, whatsoever, then you can contact me um, perhaps easiest um, at uh, the email address shown on screen uh, or connect with me on, on LinkedIn. So um, I very much appreciate the, the time you've given um, to listen to me and I, I wish you um, a, a good conference and um, hopefully you can meet some interesting people through the, the networking platform. Thank you very much.